and welcome to the Go Teach podcast. My name is Dr. Janice Meyer, and I'm the host for today's episode. I'm the co executive director for Brazos Valley Teach. Today, we're talking about how Brazos Valley Teach apprenticeships facilitates the guidance, resources, and support for high school students who aspire to be future educators. We're joined today by Ashley Zaboral from Caldwell High School and Sheila Homeyer from Bryan Collegiate and Bryan ISD, two counselors who have helped shape the beginnings of this program. Welcome, friends. Thank you. Glad Thank to be you. here. Yes. <laughs> so, Ashley, why don't you tell me a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, so I actually moved around a lot as a child. Um, my dad had a job that uh, he'd get transferred or relocated, but uh, I say I'm from Frisco, Texas. That's where I went to high school. Um, and that was when Frisco just had one school uh, still. But um, I went to school at Texas Tech. I grew up, I always wanted to be a teacher, but it was the like, put my dolls out and write on the, write on the board and just get to be the boss of people. Um, <laughs> more why I wanted to be the teacher. Um, I went to Texas Tech University after, uh, after high school and I actually pursued a degree in uh, psychology. I had an experience that happened my senior year and worked with some um, counselors that came into our school because we had uh, a pretty tragic event happen my senior year. And uh, I decided, you know what, I want to go into education, but I think I want to do more of the counseling and things with that. And so um, I pursued a degree in psychology and I graduated from Texas Tech. I met my husband while I was there, but he's actually from this area. And uh, he is an animal science major at Texas Tech, and he got on with um, a cattle ranch in West Texas population. Uh, it's in Throckmorton, Texas. Probably yep, never heard of it. Exactly. Oh, I'm I know impressed. exactly where that's at. I'm impressed. Yep. So population 900. Yes. So my first teaching job, I was, uh, I, I got my alternative certification when I graduated, part of being a counselor. You yes. have to have two years in the classroom. Um, and so I, uh, I started teaching in Throckmorton, Texas, 7th through 12th grade. I was the vertical team of English. I taught 7th through 12th grade English. Each graduating class had 10 to 15 kids in it. Um, so definitely a small school. And um, it was fun. It was fun. Small towns have a lot to offer. And um, they, I, I grew a lot as a teacher there. And I knew, okay, I've got to start working on that master's in counseling. But life happened. And uh, we started uh, our family. And so I have two boys, one's an eighth grader and one is a fourth grader. Um, but I actually loved being in the classroom. I loved it more than I thought I would. And I stayed there 12 years before um, I pursued the counseling part, which was the ultimate goal. But um, it was great. Like I said, I had experience with both junior high and high school students. And I, I definitely think those experience have made me a better counselor too, mm -hmm. just having all of that time. But um, we moved in 2013. Uh, we moved, loved our life in Throckmorton, but uh, my husband has family here and um, his father had passed away and wanted to just kind of come back and be here for his grandparents. And so we moved in 2013 and um, to Caldwell. Yeah. And so um, I, I started teaching in Caldwell and then moved into the role of a counselor. And um, even though I'm a, I'm a red raider, we you know, built lots of relationships with Texas A&M through different programs we offer. And uh, it's a great school. I We send several of our, our kids here each year. And um, I really don't have anything bad to say about it. It's a, it's a, it's a great school. These kids are lucky to have it in their backyard. So. Well, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Sheila, why don't you give us a little bit about your background? All right. Uh, I was born in Houston. Okay. Uh, my parents both worked in Houston. And uh, when I got ready to come to college, my my daddy was a big proponent of Texas A&M. And he said, I, you could go anywhere you want. I'll pay for Texas A&M. So, <laughs> so guess where I came? Uh, and, uh, and while I was here, when I got uh, ready to graduate, um, I got my first teaching job. I had a, I fell in love and fell in love with a hometown boy there in Burleson County. And and, um, and I, my first job was at Mumford Ele okay. Elementary. I don't know if you know, are familiar with that. It was a, it was a very small, we only went up to eighth grade at that point. And I was the only pre-K kindergarten teacher. Okay. I don't know if you are familiar with kindergarten and pre-K. It's like herding cats. It is. And I had a lot to learn. 
And uh, I think that's the hardest job I've ever had in my entire life. I worked all day and fell into bed at night. <laughs> and um, and anyway, so I worked, I did that for one year and the principal offered me the first and second grade teaching because at that school they combined grades. We were that small. And I did that for the next four years, I guess. And then, uh, then I moved to Caldwell. And I taught junior high math. I thought I need a change. And I started my uh, uh, counseling program. The reason I came, got into counseling was while I was an elementary teacher, I would have the big kids, you know, the seventh and eighth graders would hang out in my room after school. Mm -hmm. And they love to just sit and visit. And I thought that was a great opportunity to teach. There were very, there were a lot of teachable moments in those conversations. And I thought, how powerful you know, to do that. And I loved kids. I love teaching. And I feel like if you love kids, you love all kids. Yes. doesn't matter what, what, how big they are. And, um, and so I switched to junior high cause it was, it was easier for me to go to graduate school to come to Caldwell. And so I did that and got my, um, uh, uh, degree, my master's degree. And then I, uh, had to do an internship and I always thought I'm an elementary teacher. I'm going to be an elementary counselor. You know, and uh, in my uh, educator, I guess I guess my part of my program, he said, well, there's a spot at Caldwell High School to do an internship. They've been hollering for some help. Would you be open to doing that? And I was like, sure. You know, I'm open to do just about anything. Well, I got there and then didn't leave for 10 years. <laughs> so I uh, was hired the next year, um, didn't leave for 10 years until my husband um decided he is a full-time farmer, rancher, yes. you know, and he decided to use his degree and go to work for the USDA. And they promptly put us up in Haskell, okay. Texas, which is our north of Abilene. And my first year, people, counselors in those positions in those small towns in West Texas die in those positions. That's correct. And, and so there was none available. And I thought, what a great opportunity to get back in the classroom. And, uh, and the, place that hired me was Throckmorton. Weird. And that is amazing. Yeah. And I, I was the only fifth grade teacher. So if you were 12, I had you. And uh, I just, that was a great experience. Um, I think getting back into the classroom after 10 years, that was different. You know, when I left the classroom before we did, we did not do grades on the computer. You didn't have a computer in your room. <laughs> You know, um, I had to get used to doing class parties like it, it was. Yeah, it was a lot. And so uh, after a year, I moved over to Haskell where we lived. Mm -hmm. It was 33 miles from Haskell to Throckmorton. And so that was quite a trip. Um, and then uh, taught there for another three years until my husband moved, uh, was promoted in his job to Temple. And so we could come back home. Right. And so when we came back to Caldwell, um, I was offered the job in Bryan. Okay. And so that's where I've been ever since. Okay. Became counselor again. Okay. Um, and, and it's a, it's a different program than what I was used to. It's a, we're an early college high school. So I work a lot with, uh, with Blinn. Um, a lot more than I probably did as the counselor in uh, in Caldwell, mm -hmm. um, but I love it. Needless to say, once I got to high school, I I can't leave right. like that. That is where I feel I'm destined to be. So, um, it's been a fantastic journey, mm -hmm. um, just to get to work with all kinds of kids. Yeah, I used to joke that kindergartners and seniors were the same because they just want someone to listen to their stories. And they like stickers and colors, but really they just want someone to listen to them. Right. Yeah. So I love working with kindergartners and I love working with my seniors too, but those were good times. <laughs> good times. So Ashley, I'm curious, how did you hear about the Brazos Valley Teach program and what were your initial thoughts? So I think it kind of goes back. We have uh, one of our teachers, uh, Miss Lana Vickacall. She had worked several years, I think 15, 16 years teaching early childhood classes and decided she wanted to make a move and come to the high school. And so uh, when we snagged her at the high school, we decided it would be a great fit to put her over the education classes we already offered. Um, we really just had one class we were offering at the time for seniors. And um, of those seniors taking it, she had a, a good handful of 
of them that wanted to become teachers, but they didn't really know what that entailed. Um, and so uh, Lana got online on the Texas A&M College page, looking at the College of Education, saw a familiar name, uh, Miss Amy Jerika Hennett, who... Um, is from Caldwell and rooted in Caldwell. So she thought, I'm going to reach out to her and just see what type of guidance could I give these kids and what do I need to do? And um, from everything I've been told, uh, an idea was born. Uh, the College of Education was already looking to do something with uh, with the Brazos Valley Dis School District, something to help grow educators. And uh, when Lana called and was advocating for these kids, I think they realized there's really a need for this. And so um, we immediately got in kind of on the ground floor and in, in talks of, of Brazos Valley Teach and what that would look like. And um, obviously, we are big advocates of the program and thought that that would just uh, be a great way to support students as early as um, eighth grade and and really get them uh, into, into a program that would help them um, and also help our local districts. I'll never forget the day that um, Amy called after Lana made that phone call. And she was so excited. She goes, this is it. This is what we need. This is what we've been talking about. It was a really exciting day um, for us because that really solidified um, all the conversations that we've been having with several school districts and the conversations we've been having amongst ourselves that um, we really needed to find a way to help uh, create this pathway for students in the Brazos Valley to become educators and make it a little bit uh, more a stream more streamlined process for mm -hmm. them. Definitely. Um, so Sheila, as you learned more about Brazos Valley Teach, once we got um, all of our funding and everything together, um, what did you think about the what were the greatest strengths that the program can provide uh, students who are part of the program? All right, um, I think re relationships are probably the biggest thing that you can, that that program can provide kids because starting young, especially if you start, like Ashley said, as young as eighth grade and they really get to connect and know people that believe in them, you know, and believe that they can be educators. I think that just helps promote their, you know, going through the program and it just keeps them going even when those classes are hard mm -hmm. and they have to study for them and, and, you know, having that relationship and kind of that safety net, yes. a program like Brazos Valley Teach can provide is key. And not only seeing these kids through high school, but on into college and making sure they are taking the correct classes mm -hmm. to matric matriculate to this career. Mm -hmm. That's right. That was one of the things that when we were planning um, this program, we wanted to make sure that students have that support network all the way through the process. So they have great counselors like yourselves in all the schools. Plus, we have the mentors for them. Um, plus, we have um, the program for parents to help them with financial aid and thinking about the financial aid process and uh, so we really wanted to make sure that that support network was there for them because I know um, today in today's age without support, you can't make it through college. So that was important. So thank you. So along those lines, how do you think the Brazos Valley Teach Apprentice facilitates um, this whole guidance, resources, and support for high school students who aspire to be future educators? Um, I'll either one. So I think, um, you, you know, a couple things. First off, uh, at, there's different avenues that are offered. Obviously, the main goal is for these students to become teachers, yeah. to become educators. Um, but we're offering a combination of, of technical dual credit, academic dual credit. There's different pathways. Um, a student can become an educational aide or earn an associate or go on to the four-year um kind of traditional four-year college, which should only take them three if they yes. start the program earlier. That so that's going to save, that's going to save some money. Um, but if they want to get that traditional bachelor's degree. And so uh, there's a lot of opportunity, but in addition to that, uh, starting at 14 years old, a freshman in high school, they're taking courses that um, they're earning this dual credit. And part of that dual credit uh, requires field experience. So they're getting into classrooms um, at 14 years old. They're seeing all sides of teaching. They're seeing it from the teacher perspective. They're, they're dealing with kids. Um, now our, our, 
freshman class or level one classes, as, mm-hmm. as we call it, um, you know, they have to get so many field hours, but each year that grows and we have seniors taking um, that level four, that practicum class, and they're paired with a teacher all year long. They're getting to know these students. They're with them every day for a couple hours a day. Um, They're pulling small groups. They're helping the teacher with ideas and lessons. They're making bulletin boards. They are seeing all the ins and outs of teaching and they're growing relationships with kids. And to me, um, you know, Sheila and I were talking about it earlier. We have a lot of kids go to college and I want to be a teacher and they're not in a classroom till their last semester in student teaching. And uh, that can be that can be very eye opening, you know. Um, And so I think the fact that our kids are getting these experiences early on are really going to be helpful in growing them as educators? I think that's a great answer, Ashley. The only thing I would add to that is um, the experience that it provides in these in these uh, classes, not only provide it for kids that want to be teachers, but also for kids that think they want to be teachers and it's really not the right path for them. And so it lets them decide early on before they ever hit college that, hey, this is not for me. I need to choose another path, which I think is just as valuable Mm -hmm. um, as the kids that do. Definitely. Why is it so important for us to start this program at eighth grade rather than trying to capture them at ninth grade or 10th grade? Well, I think like Sheila just said, number one, the earlier you can get them in, they can decide if this is for them or not, you know, and and we know um, that uh, someone becoming a first year teacher, we always say, I, I joke, I wish I could go back to the very first, you know, my first year teaching and apologize to all of those kids <laughs> because you don't learn, uh, you learn so much once you get into it. But these kids, if they can hit that ground running and and stick with this, and this is really for them, um, they're already going to be way ahead, you right. know, when they, when they graduate and they start that that first job as a teacher. Um, So I think that's great. And then also if if they identify as early as eighth grade, one thing I love about Brazos Valley Teaches model is um, we're going to get kids in at any level. So you may have a senior who thought, oh, I'm going to go get a business degree. And and, uh, maybe they decide halfway through senior year, I think I want to be a teacher and we're still going to have an avenue for them. But those kids who can identify this as early as eighth grade, they're going to have uh, the most college hours that are going to go towards this um, education degree plan. They're going to have more of the field experience and have a bigger picture of what education looks like. Um, And so I think, you know, targeting and hitting those kids in eighth grade can be extremely valuable. Y'all see a lot of students in your day as counselors. Um, And hats off to you, because I know you juggle a lot of hats during the day. Um, But as you talk to students about Brazos Valley Teach, what have been their reactions to the program in the early stages? Well, I think excitement. Okay. Um, I I think they really look are looking forward to a program that's going to help them seamlessly transition into an educator program and get through faster. Okay. You know, they are really looking, there's not a, just a pot of money that's waiting for them. And so if there's anything they can do, that's going to save them money and get them to a rewarding career, um, they're all for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with Sheila. I think it's something that, um, you know, our students' eyes kind of light up. And and not just that, we have so many, both of us come from uh, schools that have a, a, a big population of, of low socioeconomic status. A lot of these kids are first-generation college students. And to have this level of support mm-hmm. so early, guiding them through the process, and when they leave us, they're going to have that level of support through Blinn. And when they leave Blinn, they're going to have that level of support through A&M or, or whichever pathway they go after that. And, um, you know, that's priceless. That's priceless. And it really is to them. It is priceless. I mean, they're not paying extra to have this. They're just lucking out to have a a great partnership and program that's going to walk them through every step of the way. I'm so happy to hear that they're excited about it. Because, you know, when you create a program, you're never quite for sure how students are going to receive it. So that's good news. On that same line, how are, what is the response from parents and faculty at your school? Um, when you talk to them about Brazos Valley Teach? Um, I, our faculty were, were very excited about this program. As you know, there's a national teacher shortage. Yes. Um, and our teachers are being pulled every which way right now to cover classes that have no teacher. 
Mm -hmm. And so any program that is going to promote more educators, you know, is, is going to be very valuable to not only our community, but, but to other communities as well, wherever the kids end up. I've had several of our teachers too. just, man, I wish we had something like this when I was, you know, younger. I mean, just when they hear about um, all the, all the different experiences these kids are going to have and the opportunities to start so early, um, you know, they're like, Holly, if I would have had that, that would have, that would have made this a breeze. So I think it's going to help overcome a lot of the challenges and hurdles that we, you know, had to do going through it kind of the traditional way. Okay. And I'll just add to that what was what's special about Brazos Valley Teaches. It's here. Yeah, it is. It is in our hometown, and the kids see it in our hometown, and and that's what they are looking for. You know, those low socioeconomic kids mm-hmm. that for for a variety of reasons they need to stay home mm-hmm. and come to and come to school, um, and this this program provides that opportunity. Right. So thinking in the future, and you kind of mentioned you alluded to this. When we talk about this teacher shortage. Um, and that's a need that Brazos Valley Teach can help serve. But where do you see Brazos Valley Teach in five to 10 years? Um, well, what I would hope to see is I would hope to see our hometown kids at our at our teacher career fairs, because as we all know, is if it's a hometown kid that comes and teaches in your school, they become not only a staple for your school, but your community. Mm-hmm. And Texas A&M can, in addition to that, uh, I would hope to see Texas A&M as, uh, as a premier teacher preparation program to be known for that and to be at the forefront of this teacher shortage in providing teachers for our community. Because, yes, that's a national uh, thing that it's a teacher shortage, but it, we are not immune in our community right here at home. I, I have to piggyback off of Sheila. I mean, my principal and I were talking, you know, just that moment and it's going to be years because we're just hitting the ground running. But when this comes full circle and we're interviewing one of our ex-students, one of our students who went through BV Teach and they've received their degree and now they're sitting across the table interviewing to work in the school that helped shape them into, into the educator that they've become. And uh, I'm really excited for that moment. And um, like Sheila said, if we can get them back on our campuses, I mean, really kind of grow in your own, they're going to be all in. They're going to be all in. And I think that's the ultimate goal of the program is to grow our own teachers and bring them back to where they're teaching back in their home community. And I think that's our ultimate vision is to help serve that need back in our local communities. And um, that's, that's, that's what we hope too. So Mm -hmm. I am so glad that y'all joined us today because you know, Brass Valley Teach not only provides this opportunity for students to start their journey to become a teacher, but it opens their, it opens the door to a career for multiple of educational careers. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the track one, that um, provides opportunities to become that child care track, that technical track, but also track two, which gets them into becoming a certified teacher as well. Um, and that's one of the great things about Brazos Valley Teach. Um, it, it just provides whatever they want to do in education, it can give them that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can't thank you enough for coming today and joining us on our episode of Brazos Valley Teach. Um, Thank you for all your hard work that you're doing day in and out to ensure that our Brazos Valley students and everyone in your schools are able to pursue the classes and the career path that interests them. Um, I know it's not an easy job, but I appreciate and we appreciate everything that you do. Um, That's a wrap on this episode. Uh, Please join us next time when we talk with a leading expert in the rationale and research behind Grow Your Own. Um, with Dr. Valerie Hill-Jackson. Until next time, friends, thank you.